Get ready, Richmond. Chef's Feed Indie Week is coming to town later this week. This popular national dinner series pops up from coast to coast. You can enjoy dishes from some of the country's top chefs, including these two lovely ladies, two of which are with us today. Award-winning chef and restaurant owner Brittany Anderson is here along with Chef Olivia Wilson, ready to share a tasty preview of the event. Welcome to Virginia this morning. Welcome back and welcome here for the first Thank time. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's lovely to have you. And you guys are the ones, like, you know those people who post all those annoying pictures of their dinner, like, up close and personal. <laughs> That's me when I visit these two restaurants because everything on both menus is phenomenal. But two kind of uh, inspired restaurants. They're, they're, they're a different cuisine maybe for this area and both kind of play off each other. Sure. So at Metzger we like to do kind of a modern take on German food and at Brenner Pass we do our kind of modern take on the French and Italian Alps. So two kind of cuisines that aren't highlighted as much but um, something we really like to share with our guests here. You have been, and I'm sure it's probably not the first thing you do is start singing your own praises, but Brittany, you've been recognized like mega big time for uh -huh. the work that you're doing here uh, with both restaurants. Can you, can you share a little bit about that? Um, I've been very lucky to get to work with really, really incredible people who've helped support me in my career. And um, we've been nominated for a couple of James Beard Awards and um, I recently competed on Iron Chef. So fun things and um, Hopefully we'll just keep continuing doing that. Yeah, just yeah. a couple nominations for James Beard. It's no no big whoop, right? You know, in a day I, again with the Instagram feed, folks who follow me know that I'm a mega fan of German food. But I read rest, I read um, articles that say that German food's having a tough time, right? It's it's kind of um, some folks are it's a little heavy, right? Some folks are not necessarily seeking it out. That you have a different spin to some degree. This is true. I think that um, a lot of the big old German beer halls that are making heavier food and classic Bavarian traditions are kind of dying out. But what we try to do is lighten that food up for a kind of new uh, generation, a new kind of German cuisine. So hopefully that's the future of German cuisine and we can see more uh, restaurants doing that. And Olivia, hot and happening in Bre at Brenner Pass here in Scott's Edition. You have so much traffic coming in to see you and, and try out the menu. Yeah, it's really exciting. And I think on the same note with German cuisine, we try to make the alpine cuisine very approachable and it is very comforting and uh, especially in the summer times we're excited to use all these fresh ingredients and you'll see that in our dish that we're making today. We are making a peach tomato tart. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily pair those two together. How is this going to work? Well, I think the sweetness and the bright acidity of the tomato goes really well and then we'll have a nice rich pecorino mousse and fresh pecorino cheese all in a pat brise crust. Awesome. It's kind of like a salad in a tart shell. I yeah, love so. Well, I'm already <laughs> intrigued. I think we're warmed up here so oh, we'll great. get started with uh, with making it all together. Sure. It looks pretty fresh. These are, these are ingredients of the season. Yeah, really seasonal all local ingredients from here and uh, right outside of Richmond. We've got tomatoes from Village Garden, which is in Hanover County. Peaches are from Crown Orchard or Agraberry? Uh, Saunders, Saunders, actually. Saunders mm -hmm. peaches, um, a local farm. And we're going to make some pickled mustard seeds. And Olivia is going to show you guys how to make a pat brise, um, which is the tart dough. So I'll start by combining one cup of mustard seeds. These are just yellow right. mustard seeds. Uh, one cup of sherry vinegar. Okay. And again, these world-class chefs have to use our cook set, which is, you know, it, that throws a little, it's an ingredient <laughs> that you don't necessarily account for all the time. We've got a half a cup of sugar, about a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna save a little for later. And then equal parts water to your vinegar. Okay. Pickled mustard seeds are a really cool condiment because they give you the flavor of mustard without the assertive heat or, um, and it's got a little more pickle to it, a little more acidity. So we're just gonna let this come up to a boil and then you'll reduce it down until it's sticky. The mustard seeds have kind of expanded mm -hmm. and um, they're still crunchy, but they definitely have more of like a, uh, a kind of sticky jammy texture. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. it's really delicious. So this this condenses down to become To become that. this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. So pickled mustard seeds. And now this is something that not many of us would touch with a 10-foot pole, but you could probably do it with your <laughs> eyes closed, Olivia. Sort of. Yeah, so we're making paprise, but it's, it's basically like a pie dough that we've all, you know, learned from... Uh, joy of cooking and that kind of thing, but I use uh, an adaptation of Julia Child's recipe um, and something I learned in culinary school too. So uh, we have three cups of just all-purpose flour with uh, kosher salt and then we have about like half cup of cube butter and then I use shortening. 
Um, sometimes in some savory things that include meat, I'll use lard or something mm -hmm. like that because it gives it a lot of really nice flavor. So you can kind of combine this just with your hands. And that's kind of an adaptation in and of itself because a lot of times you see maybe an all butter recipe, mm -hmm. right? Right. And I think this gives the flakiness and the pockets of um, like air in the dough that that's make it similar to like a puff pastry or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of just break this up until smaller clumps form. You can also use a pastry cutter if you don't want to get as messy as me. I try to follow like the recipe that, and that's because you guys are chefs and you're comfortable with this but I would feel like I'm warming that butter up way too much by doing it with my hands. So I go pretty quick and I leave larger clumps than most recipes kind of call for um, and then add the water and I, again, I'll eyeball it. I'm a bad at following recipes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you just invent them. That's what a great chef does. Brittany, talk about Chef's Feed Indie Week. This is happening and it's kind of a big deal. Chef's Feed Indie Week is a pretty incredible experience. I've been a part of it for three events. This will be my fourth event and now I'm hosting. Um, 24 chefs from across, across the country, Michelin starred chefs, James Beard award winners, um, just the kind of the newest, coolest chefs around that I want to meet and eat yeah. their food. They're all coming to Richmond for three nights of dinners. So uh, 12 chefs cook on Thursday night, 12 chefs cook on Friday night, and then on Sunday night, we all collaborate and they're paired up. Um, so I'm cooking with Annie Petrie, who owns a restaurant in Nashville called Decca. I'm very excited about that. Um, and we all kind of get to learn from each other. We get to share other people's food with our guests. And I think people in Richmond who don't get to experience, you know, these people's restaurants all the time by traveling. So um, it's a really cool thing. And this, is, this year it's sponsored by Chef's Feed, which is an app that has recommendations by us, by our chefs. And it just recently launched here in Richmond um, where you can go log on and see where I like to eat in Richmond or where Olivia likes to eat. We're both members, uh, we're both experts on the Chef's Feed app. So it's a really neat kind of combination of talent and people and uh, one of the best things that I ever ever got to do. What an awesome tool. So basically rock star chefs get to acknowledge other rock stars and share where you would go when you go to visit a different city. Yes, definitely. Wow, that's pretty fantastic. That'll be wonderful to share with Richmond. I think Richmond's gaining that reputa reputation or maybe already has about being a culinary destination, mm -hmm. but this really puts it there. Definitely. So we have about a minute left, and I know you guys have, we have to do all the oh, assembly. Can we yes. make the magic happen? I know. Let's make it happen. We, I could gab with you gals all morning. <laughs> so we have a Finished tart shell. Okay. Um, basically, Olivia would roll this out and put it in a um, into a ring uh, mold, ring mold okay. and bake them off, and then they leave me these. Then what we're gonna do, like I said, a salad and a tart shell. We're gonna cut some of these beautiful tomatoes from Village Garden, and we're gonna just pop them in here. We've got all kinds of beauty little things. And while you put those in, Brittany, you mentioned mm -hmm. that there is a uh, charitable uh, angle to the the exciting event that's happening. Yes, yeah, so Woodford Reserve is also a sponsor of the event, um, and they are uh, we're participating in a program called Pair and Share, where we are uh, created cocktails with Woodward, Woodford Reserve, and all the proceeds from those cocktails uh, are donated to a charity, which is No Kid Hungry. Um, you can find these cocktails and pairings all across Richmond um, at different restaurants like um, the Roosevelt, Brenner Pass, Metzger Bar and Butchery, Jasper, um, lots of different great places are gonna have um, these cocktails. And every drink you drink, it goes to a good cause, which is um, worth it for me to have a few cocktails sometimes. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's pretty great. Enjoy responsibly and then make sure that uh, you know you head home and have a great evening. Yes. But that's really cool. So you've assembled all these. Now I said at the beginning, some folks might not expect to pair peach with tomato. How does that work? I think that, you know, it's like what grows together goes together. Mm. So um, peaches and tomatoes, both really, really big, especially right now in August, they're popping off. So we like to use those things and I think that they make a lot of sense. The sweetness of the tomatoes and the sweetness of the peaches. Um, plus we're gonna put a little bit of this Dijon vinaigrette on. And producer's giving me a wrap. So you have created awesome, like an awesome showcase of summer. That's pretty much it. You garnish and then you put yeah. the magic. And we have a finished product over here. Well, good luck this week, ladies. And thanks Thank for being you. with us. Thank Great you so stuff. Much. Yes. And thanks for doing what you're doing for Richmond. Everybody across the country knows us. Enjoy three nights Aww. of culinary magic when Chef's Feed Indie Week kicks off this Thursday, August 23rd at Brenner Pass and Scott's Edition. For more information, we'll have a direct link on our show website early this afternoon, wtvr.com slash VTM.